Acts 27, begin reading verse number 9. The Bible says, Now when much time was spent, and when sailing was now dangerous, because the fast was now already past, Paul admonished them, and said unto them, Sirs, I perceive that this voyage will be with hurt and much damage, not only of the lading and the ship, but also of our lives. Nevertheless, the centurion believed the master and the owner of the ship more than those things which were spoken by Paul. Let me just stop right there and say, it's not a new thing that people ignore preachers. Been trying to tell you all for a couple of weeks, just keep looking up. Hmm? And yet people are scared to death. Hmm? Listen, I'm not a prophet, I'm not a son of the prophet, but I believe in God. I believe his promises are true. And I believe, as a uh, preacher said in Sunday school, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Do you think I'm going to believe some wicked politician over God? Yeah. Well, anyway, that went over like a lead balloon. Verse number 12, the Bible says, And because the haven was not commodious to winter in, the more part advised to part to depart thence also, if by any means they might uh, attain to uh, Phoenicia and there to winter, which is an haven of Crete, and lieth toward the southwest and toward and northwest. And when the south wind blew softly, supposing that they had obtained their purpose, loosing thence they sailed close by Crete. But not long after there rose against it a tempestuous wind called Eurocladon, and when the ship was caught and could not bear up into the wind, we let her drive. And running under a certain island, which is called Clauda, we had much work to come by the boat, which when they had taken up, they used helps, undergirding the ship, and fearing lest they should fall into the quicksands, strake sail, and so were driven. And being exceedingly tossed with a tempest, the next day they lightened the ship. And the third day we cast out with our own hands the tackling of the ship. And when neither sun nor stars in many days appeared, and no small tempest laid on us, all hope that we should be saved was then taken away. Let's pray. Our Father, we bless you. We thank you, Lord, that you're greater than all our circumstances, all of our fears, all of our trials, all that this world can throw at us. We are thankful, Lord, uh, you're still on the throne. You neither slumber or sleep. Uh, this virus caught America by surprise, but it didn't catch you by surprise. Uh, and Father, for years we've been praying for revival. It seems like when there ought to be a time when folks are turning to God, it ought to be now. Uh, Father, I pray you'd help us to stay the course, uh, help us stay true to the Bible and true to you, because, God, you've been true to us. Uh, and, Father, help us, Lord, to yield ourselves uh, unto the things of God, uh, seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Uh, God, help us not only seek you first, but put you first uh, and long to see you do a work in these days. Uh, Father, I pray you'd help us today, uh, set down amongst us, uh, calm people's nerves and fears. Uh, God, uh, increase their faith. Uh, God, save that one nearest hell. Uh, and God, do an eternal work around us even this day. Uh, Father, we'll bless you and praise you for what you do. Uh, God, you're a good God. You're our God. We bless your holy name. Uh, for it's in the wonderful and lovely name of Jesus we do pray. Uh, amen. Uh, Amen. Uh, I want you to notice some things here in Acts chapter number 27. Uh, first thing I want you to notice is the servant. Uh, again in verse number 9, uh, said when much time was spent, uh, when sailing was now dangerous uh, because uh, of the fast now pa already passed, uh, Paul admonished them. Uh, we find in verses 9 through 11, uh, 
a man of God. A man of God because he's a servant to God. Listen, there's a lot of men that call themselves a man of God. It's different when God puts his hand on a man and he proves he's God's man. Listen, God's man will stand when everything else comes against him. God's man's going to stand for what's right, what's true. God's man is always going to point folks to God and let them know Jesus is the answer for your problems. We find a servant. Uh, Thanks be unto God, there's still some servants. Uh, There's still some folks uh, that herald uh, uh, the gospel uh, and let folks know Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Uh, Here this servant, the man of God, tried to warn them. They didn't want to heed it. Can I say for 2,000 years, God's raised up servants to stand uh, and warn folks about the impending doom, uh, a place called hell, uh, and people have ignored them. Thank God not everybody ignores them. Uh, Thank God there's still some uh, uh, that love to hear what this blessed old book says. Uh, We see the servant. Now notice the storm. Look at verse 14. I've preached on this storm on several occasions. But not long after there arose against it a tempestuous wind called Eurachlodon. Can I say, whenever they put a name on a storm, it's a storm. Now the other night, we was uh, sitting there at the house because you can't go anywhere. (laughs) And uh, Christian turned on his police radio because we heard some warning sirens and all that. Had no idea that we was in a a, a state where a tornado uh, uh, watch was in effect. High winds blew through. They didn't name that. Hmm? Can I say you can have thunderstorms, hailstorms, uh, uh, rainstorms, windstorms, dust storms, uh, uh, lightning storms. You can have all kinds of storms. But when they put put them names on them, those things do damage. Hmm? Can I say uh, this storm caught them by surprise? Hmm? Uh, they thought because they got a light wind, everything would be all right, even though it was winter time, even though it was hurricane season. They thought we can get there. And they sailed out. But it, up come this storm. It caught them by surprise. Huh? Listen, it's one thing if you know something might happen. It's another thing when it catches you off guard. Mm-hmm. You know why our government is in a frazzle right now? This thing caught them off guard. It amazes me that our president was meeting uh, uh, with some council and, and uh, talking about what they'd do if this thing came to America while they were trying to impeach him. I'm glad he wasn't sitting over in the corner wringing his hands. I'm glad he was doing his job. Hmm. But it caught them by surprise. Now, it amazes me. Now, I, I'm going to get on politics for just a second, but that's okay. It amazes me, Brother Ray, after he had that meeting with some of them, they're trying to preach him. Some of them that sat in that meeting went and sold off all their stocks. Hmm. They didn't tell us to sell off our stocks. That's called inside trading. Uh, uh, That's called they need to go to jail. Huh? Hey, they sent Martha the Stewart to jail, and she's a sweet little old lady that makes aprons. Huh? So if they send her to jail, they ought to send these crooked, po- crooked politicians there. And I guarantee you that Feinstein won't go to jail because her and Hillary's the same person. Oh, yeah. Ah, you're welcome. There's my politics. You're welcome. Yeah, amen, Three of us Republicans ought to go to jail. Yeah. Right. Uh, amen. They're taking advantage over this thing that they knew would come and hurt us. And they got their money. They took their money and ran. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, they ought to go to jail. You're welcome. But see, this virus caught a lot of folks by surprise. That storm caught them by surprise. Uh, listen, last year when Miss Nett told me uh, that I had cancer, it didn't catch us by surprise because I'd had a lump. I'd had some tests. We knew something was going on. But can I say this storm caught them by surprise? There's nothing worse than when something comes out of the blue and you wasn't expecting it. Can I say this storm continued longer than they could imagine? They said uh, 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 several days, no sun or stars. They didn't know if it was night or morning. They didn't know. It was so dark, and it was in this storm, and it uh, uh, continued longer than 
they ever imagined. It's one thing to have something hit you and then you get over it. It's another thing when it lingers and lingers and lingers and you begin to cry out to God, How long? How long, O oh Lord, this subsides? I like that song Miss Brittany sang on, on, on Wednesday night. If you wasn't here, you need to go back and watch it. Uh, uh, it didn't come to stay, it came to pass. I like them coming to pass times. But sometimes you wonder if it ever is going to pass. It continued longer than they could imagine. It caught them by surprise. But can I say it challenged their very existence. They threw everything off but people off that boat. Now we don't, we don't, we don't think on that. We read verses and we, do, we don't think about it. Do you understand that one minute the bow of that ship's facing the heavens, the next minute it's facing the deep, and the waves are tossing that thing. That they had no control over that ship. It was just going up and down and up and down and up and down, rocking their very existence. They thought they were not going to make it. My dear friends, when you get in those kind of storms, you better know God. Hmm? Yes, sir. We see the servant. We see the storm. But notice the standpoint or the outlook of the servant. Look at verse 20. And when neither sun nor stars in many days appeared, and no small tempest lay on us, all hope that we should be saved was then taken away. Hmm. Mercy. You're in a storm. As the choir sang this morning, if you've got hope, you can wide, ride the waves of the storm. But Brother Brian, their outlook was all hope, all hope that we should be saved was then taken away. They had no hope. They had nothing to look forward to. They didn't look, they, they done lost sight of I'll get home and kiss mama when this thing's over. I'll kiss my babies when this thing's over. That, uh, that's all gone. All hope is gone. They are just riding this vessel knowing they're going to die. They're on a death row vessel headed for eternity. That's their outlook. No hope. No hope. There's people in America today sitting in their houses where they've hoarded up 87,000 rolls of t toilet paper and water. They don't have anything to eat, but they got water and they got things to wipe with. That's all they got, huh? Sitting there watching every moment of television news they can, worrying, Amen. thinking they have no hope. Amen. You know, it's worse. There's people who claim to be saved, wringing their hands, worried that if they step outside the doors, they're going to catch this terrible, 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 horrible. Worse than bird flu, worse than swine flu, worse than killer bees, worse than MRSA, worse than... This thing's going to be the mother of all viruses uh, and destroy them. Hmm? They don't have any hope. They don't have any hope. I want to preach this morning on this thought. When things look bleak. I mean, they're, they're, they're in a bleak situation. I understand that. I understand there are folks who are sick. I understand there are folks uh, 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 who have uh, 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 real anxieties. I understand those things. Uh, 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 but listen, uh, 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 I can understand when things look bleak. Uh, 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 listen, before we met with that surgeon last year, uh, we didn't know what was going to happen. Uh, but I did have somebody on the inside of me let me know it'd be okay. Are you listening? Uh, uh, hey, uh, 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 it'd do some good if you start turning down the uh, volume of the television uh, and turn up the volume of heaven in your soul. Uh, uh, you need some living water to bubble up inside of you uh, uh, when things start looking bleak. Uh, I got to thinking about some things in the Bible uh, when things look bleak. Uh, uh, can I say it looked bleak uh, uh, when Israel was backed up against the Red Sea uh, and all of Pharaoh's army uh, is coming down upon them uh, and God just had a pillar
pillar of fire uh, standing between them and Pharaoh. Uh, and they thought this thing's over. Uh, there is no hope. Uh, hey, but God had a man. Uh, and that man stood upon a rock. Uh, and he raised his hands uh, and said, Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Uh, and God rolled back the waters. Uh, and that bleak outlook uh, now has a way of escape. Uh, and God made it out. I uh, made a way uh, where they got out. Uh, and then he drowned all of Pharaoh's army. Uh, uh, friend, it may look bleak. Uh, hang around. Uh, God's liable to show up uh, and take that thing you fear the most uh, and destroy it. Uh, hey, uh, when things look bleak, uh, can I say uh, it looked bleak uh, with that same crowd a few days later uh, after they not had anything to drink uh, come to pool water uh, and they said, hallelujah, we got some water. Uh, and they began to drink it uh, and it was poisoned. Uh, it was bitter water. Uh, it was water some Myra, it was not beneficial to them. Uh, hey, uh, uh, whatever's going on may not be beneficial to you today. Uh, it may look bleak, uh, but by guy, that same man, uh, I got in tune with God. Uh, God said, throw in a stick, uh, and it'll heal the waters. Uh, I got good news for your business. Uh, a cross of wood one day uh, that the darling Savior hung on uh, and with his stripes we are healed. Uh, there is hope when things look bleak. Uh, I got to thinking, my dear friends, uh, it looked pretty bleak. Uh, well, when David uh, took some supplies to his brother uh, 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 there, uh, in the battlefield uh, and his brother all hunkered down hiding uh, on the mountain and David takes supplies uh, wants to see how the battle's going. Uh, and David hears nothing but blaspheming and cursing uh, from a giant down in the valley. Uh, he's blaspheming God uh, and he's cursing the army of God. Uh, and I can just hear David uh, uh, looking around. He says, is there not a cause? Uh, and they're all saying there is no hope. Uh, we don't have anybody take on that giant. Uh, one fellow looked at him and said, David, did you see how big that giant is? David said, huh? Have you seen how big my God is? Huh? David said, I'll take him. It looked like there was no hope. And David got five smooth stones and a slingshot. And he headed toward the battle. And you know, Goliath began to blaspheme. He said, I called for a man. And you send me a lad. David said, you come to me with spirit and sword. I come to you in the name of the Lord. And David ran to the battle. And David let that stone go. And God directed the stone right to the place where he didn't have armor. God smacked him in the back of the head. He fell down on his face. And David took his own sword and slew the giant. It may be weak. You may be facing a giant. But we got a God who's a giant killer. Hey, I got to thinking about old Elisha's servant. Got up and opened the door to get the morning paper. And he looked out and all the Syrian armies all around him. And he cried to the man of God. And Elisha come out. And he said, look at him, look at him. What shall we do, master? And the man of God, the servant again, says they that be with us uh, are more than they that be with him. Uh, hey, the servant thought he was crazy. Uh, just like some of our crowd thinks, preach you're having church. Uh, you're crazy. Uh, hey, God said, open up his eyes. Uh, and the Lord opened that servant's eyes. Uh, and in the hills there were chariots of fire. Uh, I got good news for you. Uh, all around us today, uh, God's got guardian angels uh, and chariots of fire. Uh, waiting to take care of his youngins. Uh, hey, I just hang out with God. Hallelujah. It don't matter how bleak it is. Uh, I got a God uh, who's greater than what we'll face. Uh, hey, it don't matter how bleak it looks. Uh, it don't matter what the experts say. Uh, the final authority is Jesus. Uh, I got to thinking about old Samson. Uh, wore out, been fighting Philistines all day. Uh, and all he could see is Philistines. Uh, and all he can look around and find uh, is the jawbone of an ass. Uh, and uh, he gets to swiping that thing. Uh, and the Spirit of God came on him. Uh, and when it was all said and done, uh, he slew a thousand Philistines with that jawbone. I'm telling you, it looked bleak. 
till God got involved. Uh, Hey, uh, 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 he didn't need uh, nuclear bombs. He didn't need uh, uh, nuclear bombers. He didn't need tanks. Uh, he didn't need an army. He just needed God uh, and an old dead jawbone of an ass. Uh, listen, uh, it looked bleak uh, when Daniel was in the lion's den. Just preach on that the other night. It looked bleak. But God sent an angel. Huh? Hey, uh, Y'all, I know you're supposed to be clean and wash your hands and all that. I just believe uh, 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 an unseen hand washes all that stuff before I touch it. Uh, are you listening? Uh, I believe God's taking care of me. Uh, hey, and even if he doesn't, like I said, don't threaten me with heaven. Hey, uh, hey, I'm his, uh, and I, I'm persuaded he's able to keep that uh, uh, which I've committed unto him against that day. Uh, but when my day comes, uh, hallelujah, I'm out of here, uh, and I'm in glory with him forevermore uh, I got to thinking it looks bleak can I say it looked bleak when them three Hebrews were facing that fiery furnace uh, by the way they did go into that furnace which had been heated seven times hotter than it ever been heated before it actually slew the guards who were going to throw them in when they opened it up it was so hot uh, uh, but I want to tell you something it wasn't too hot for God uh, uh, Nebuchadnezzar said didn't we when three, well, there's a fourth man, uh, and he looks like the Son of God. Why? Because he was the Son of God. Uh, hallelujah. It looked bleak for them boys. Uh, hey, but they come out, they didn't smell like smoke. Uh, hey, you talk about a vaccine. Uh, uh, Jesus protected them. Uh, can I say it looked bleak for blind Bartimaeus? Say so he'd been born blind. He didn't know any different. Yeah, but uh, if you go study it out, He's sitting there outside of Jericho. That's the last time Jesus went to Jericho. That was his last opportunity. This might be your last opportunity to get saved, friend. Mm. Might be our last opportunity to have revival. Uh, it looked bleak for Bartimaeus. He began to cry, Thou son of David, have mercy on him. They said, Shut up. Be quiet. Be quiet. And the more they got on him, the louder he got. Oh, thou son of David, uh, have mercy on me. Uh, and the Bible says, uh, and Jesus stood still. Uh, it's an amazing uh, all that's going on in the world. Uh, all that God's involved in. Uh, all that God's taking care of. I mean, he goes to every funeral of every sparrow. Uh, I mean, he feeds uh, 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 every animal. Uh, he grows every flower. Uh, uh, he puts every twinkle in every star. Uh, he tells the sun when to shine. Uh, tells the moon to shine at night. Uh, uh, he births every baby into this world. Uh, I mean, God's a busy God. Uh, but isn't it amazing uh, when it looks bleak in your life uh, when you begin to call on Him for mercy? Uh, he just takes, uh, stands still and takes care of you. What a God we serve. Mm. Have a fit cast off His garments, follow Jesus in the way. Jesus told him, Thy faith hath made thee whole. Can I say it looked bleak for them ten lepers? There was no cure for leprosy, still not. Say, so there's no cure for this virus. There wasn't no cure, but there was a cleansing. No cure for sin, but there's a cleansing. Huh? He cleansed them all. They all ran to the priest, showed themselves, and headed home, except one. One turned back and gave glory to God. He said, where are the nine? We're not ten healed. Where are the nine? Thanks be unto God for the few that will still give glory to God. Huh? It looked bleak, but God's got a cleansing. Huh? Can I say this? It looked cleansing for 5,000 men plus women and children is on a hot day, was hungry, and didn't have no McDonald's nowhere in sight. Huh? Jesus asked Andrew, one of his disciples, says, uh, 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 what, we ain't got no money to feed him. He said, 200 penny worth of bread wouldn't feed this crowd. Uh, he said, what do you got? He said, there's a little lad with lunch. Trev, stand up. Uh, come here. He said, we got a little lad here. He ain't much. He's skin and bones. He ain't much. But he's got something. Uh, he's got a little lunch. Thank you, buddy. You can sit down. Huh? He's got a little lunch. It looks bleak, but he's got a little lunch. Uh, he's got some fish nuggets and hush puppies. That's about all he's got. Five loaves and two fishes. They said, what are they among so many? <laughs> it looked bleak. Uh, they're all going to die of starvation out there that day. And Jesus said, give me what you got. 
It may look bleak. Just give it to Jesus. Uh, uh, you know, they all fed as much as they would. They eat, they eat, they eat, and they eat, and they sopped, and they sopped it, and they sopped it, and they ate it. And then they took up 12 baskets full. Huh? Why? Because Jesus was there. Can I say it looked bleak for that lady with the issue of blood? Twelve years spent all she had, went to every physician. Nobody could help her. I got news for you. How would to God that our president would say, Y'all, don't go to the theater and don't go to the ball games, don't, but make sure you go to church. And the, the president would call for men of God to come to Washington and in Camp Washington with prayer and bathe that place in prayer. And the president would call for the men of God to get a hold of God. Because my dear friends, that lady with the issue of blood said, if I can just touch the hem of him, it'll be all right. <laughs> and if somebody could just touch Jesus on behalf of all this mess, it'd be all right. Hmm? Uh, look bleak. Can I say it looked bleak with Jairus' daughter, 12 years old. Look bleak. Time they got there with Jesus, they said, it's too late. She's already dead. Jesus says, she's not dead. She's just asleep. They began to laugh at him. Hmm? Like a lot of them are laughing at us today. Right. Jesus went in, just said, daughter, rise. Jesus come walking out with her. I wonder what happened to their laughter then. Hmm? Him walking out with her. Uh, look bleak till Jesus showed up. Amen. Can I say this? It looked bleak for old Legion. It's possessed. So what is your name? He said Legion. I mean, he had a whole lot of them. Sorry, no good devils in him. They chained him to the tombs. He'd break the chains. They was afraid of him in that town. They got more fearful when they found him clothed and in his right mind. It looked bleak till he met Jesus. Jesus cast out the demon. What does Jesus cast out of your life? That's why some of your family members are afraid of you. How many of you have had somebody say, you're going to church? Yep. Where else would I go? This is the haven of my life. This is the oasis from this world. Hey, this is where God meets with his people. Hmm? Can I say, it looked bleak for that woman at the well. Hmm? Until she got to drink a living water. Hmm? You, you, you realize all the, the connotations of that story? She'd had five husbands. One she's shacking up with is not her husband. She had spent her life trying to find some gratification in this flesh and in this world. And all this world did was spit her up, or chew her up and spit her out. But Jesus cared for her. Amen. And he changed her life. Say, so how do you know it changed her life? Because she went and told the whole town, come see a man, told me everything I ever did. Is, there not a, is this not the Christ? And many believed on him for her saying. Hmm. I thought about this. It looked bleak for that thief on the cross. Yep. Amen. He's moments away from hell. But there was something within him. that said, this guy in the middle is not like me and the other guy. The other guy's still railing and cursing. He said, <laughs> Don't you? Hey, we deserve it, not him. And they looked at him and called him Lord. Hmm? That's when he got in, right? He said, Lord, remember me when thou comest in thy kingdom. And the Lord <laughs> said, Today, aren't you glad it's a right now instantaneous salvation? He said, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. Huh? Take that church of Christ. He didn't have to get baptized to go. Huh? Take that Catholics. He didn't have to go through the catechisms to go. Uh, hey, take that any other religion. He didn't have to do anything but believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and he got saved. Hallelujah! But it looked bleak. Huh? Let me give you three things of what to do when it looks bleak. The Bible is full of situations when it looked bleak. Why do you think God pinned them down? The writer of Hebrews told us that the Old Testament was uh, uh, an ensample for us. Right. And all these things were pinned down so that our faith would be put in God. We could see how great God is, how God has moved and changed people's lives. And we can take refuge in the fact He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. He changeth not. If God did it for Daniel, He can do it for us. That's right. As a matter of fact, God said, I am. 
in God's eyes, he still is present today as he was in Daniel's day because it's the same day with God because there is no time in eternity. It's just as fresh with God as, it was, as if it just happened. We are the ones that get all jacked up with time. The reason we wear watches is we know we got an appointment with death. As it is appointed unto man wants to die, and after this is the judgment. We're keeping track of time, not God. And God is time. Time and eternity. But let me just give you three things when it looks bleak. Can I say? This is what you do when it looks bleak. First of all, you need to turn to God. I can't help but believe God has shut down a lot of junk that has preoccupied a lot of people so they'll turn from the junk and turn to God. Amen. If you're honest, there's a lot of things you have go on in your life on a regular basis that takes your attention from God. Amen. Every situation was bleak. There was no hope until people turned to God. Amen. Good. It'd do you and I some good if we realize God's still on the throne and turn our attention from CNN and Fox and MSNBC and all that other junk out there and turn our, our attention toward heaven. Amen. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. I just, I'm not trying to be a martyr and I'm not trying to be a big smart aleck and I'm not trying to set a standard. I'm just doing what we're supposed to do. We're to always be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. God hasn't changed, so why should I change? Huh? I'm not trying to be a hero. I'm just doing what we're supposed to do. Can I say, you'll get a lot of help if you'll quit wondering and worrying and focused on everything that's worldly. And just look toward heaven. Just get a word from heaven. It'd help you. It'd help you. I mean, I, I, I started feeling a little guilty. I've had so many preachers call me. And so many preachers have made the, the commitment that they're just going to live stream their service. Let me help you something. The Bible says where two or three are gathered together in his name, he'd be in the midst. Now, I know a message can go out through live stream, but that is no substitute for church. The church is a called out assembly. It is a body of believers that unite for one sole purpose and that is to glorify and worship God. My dear friends, uh, uh, somebody, uh, well the government has mandated phooey. The government set a decree that Daniel couldn't pray. What did he do? He prayed. For 2,000 years, governments and kings and uh, nobles have tried to stamp out what we are doing today. Hmm. I wonder this, Brother Phil. In Hebrews chapter 11, all those that are in the hall of faith, down there where it gets to that crowd they don't even name, it said, and others mm -hmm. were sown asunder, stoned to death, you know, burned in oil, burned into stake. All that crowd. I wonder what they're doing looking down on churches today that are all about live streaming their services. Yeah. When they busted into homes and they take a, a man's wife and his babies and tie them to a stake and say, we're going to set them on fire unless you recant Jesus. And then he'd just get in the stake with them. Hmm. Wonder what that crowd's doing today. There's a little virus going on. We might get sick. When people's heads were chopped off. When people were stoned to death. And we got the audacity to say, well, church isn't that important to me. It was important to them. And it sure is important to Jesus because he loved the church and gave himself for it. Can I say something? And again, I know I'm wired different. But bless God, Armageddon would fall. Amen. I know we're going to be gone for Armageddon hits. But you know what I'm saying? They can, they can camp out whatever they want right outside the doors and dare me to come. I'm coming in by the grace of God. Because Jesus loved the church. What are we telling the world when we have preached for generations Jesus is the answer now when the governor says, well, you better not congregate. Yeah, come on, bring it home. 
You know what we're telling the world by congregating? He's still the answer. I wouldn't miss church. I wouldn't miss it by the grace of God for anybody or anything. Because I promise you, somewhere, somehow, some way, the, when the trumpet sounds, people are going to be in church. I don't want to be out of church when the trumpet. This might be just the day he comes. I want to be in church. Huh? There's some who choose not to live stream. They choose to do the drive-in where they all drive in and they sit in their cars and, and, and they preach to them. I was wondering during the invitation, what to do? Just pull forward, drop it and drive, pull forward? Well, I'd like to get saved, but I can't get out of this seat belt. It sure would solve a lot of the problems if people would, when it licks bleak, just turn to God. For years I've heard them say, He's the final answer. Well, let Him be the final answer. Can I say this? Secondly, when things look bleak, not only turn to God, talk to God. The old hymn writer wrote, Just a little talk with Jesus makes it right. The Bible says, Ask and you shall receive, seek and you shall find. Why don't you start just asking? The Bible tells us to boldly come to the throne of grace to find help in time of need. Hey, we need some help. You know where that help is found? Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Huh? I was. I started getting so many calls from so many people and hearing about so many people closing. And, and even some that have asked me in the last week or so, what are you going to do? And I tell them we wouldn't do what we're going to do. I start feeling guilty. I'm thinking, have I missed the mark? And I said, Lord. And he said, shut up, boy. You know what to do. This little talk with Jesus be all right. Yeah. Uh, listen, I don't mean to put anybody in an odd situation. And certainly, if folks are sick or folks have a com compromised immune system, you know, stay home. I mean, you know. And really, I meant what I said yesterday on the message I sent out. If folks are sitting there worried about stay, if you don't believe God, stay home. Because all you're going to do is grieve the Holy Ghost anyway. Amen. I just wanted to come out and hear from Jesus. Yeah. And I want to do what I'm commanded to do. Yeah, huh? Not forsake the assembling of yourselves together. So much more as you see the day approaching. Yep. This virus might be a, a warning from God. Well, I see the day approaching. I'm going to be in the house of God. Right. Hmm? So well, I might offend somebody. I'd rather please Jesus than please people. Right. Amen. Huh? Amen. Matter of fact, when they commanded the disciples not to, or the apostles not to preach in his name anymore, he said, better to obey God than man right, yeah. hmm. I'm just going to hang in there with Jesus Amen. things look like turn to God talk to God and then trust in God mm -hmm. hmm. listen he has my very breath in his hand Amen. I learned a long time ago he's in control Amen. he's the one that takes care of me I couldn't Amen. get out of bed in the morning if it wasn't for God Amen. huh the older I get, the slower I get. I still realize it's God that's nudging me along. Sure. Hmm. You've got to learn to trust in God. That way of faith still works. Amen. I thought of this. Jesus said before he went to Calvary, he said, when the Son of Man cometh, will he find faith on the earth? When I first got saved back in 1974, we was going through the oil crunch. The economies of the world were terrible. And there was a lot of preaching on the rapture. And I used to, in my little mind back then, wonder, Brother Jack, if the Lord took all the believers, all the Christians out of this world, wouldn't we be missed? I mean, back then... They'd introduced the Living Bible. They'd had the RSV for a while, but by and large, most charismatic churches, most Methodist churches, certainly all the Baptist churches, everybody's still preaching the book. And when the gospel's being preached, God honors it. And regardless of what shingles hanging over the door, God honors His Word. And there were folks being saved in different... But can I say some 46 years later, even Baptist churches don't use the book anymore. When that trumpet blows and we're out of here, can I help you with something? Brother Kevin, I don't think we're going to be missed. 
I think Baptist Church is going to be filled the next Sunday. Hmm? There are folks that have sat on pews for years and God has tried to convince them they need to get born again and all the while they are ignoring, falling asleep, not doing anything with the Bible. Listen, if what you have didn't change your life, I'd junk it for what's real. There's some folks you can't, you can't hardly get them to church on Sunday night, can't get them here on Wednesday night, can never get them in an altar, can never get them out knocking on doors, can never get them to do anything unless you're serving food. They'll show up any time for that. I got good news. You get saved, you can go to the marriage supper. You talk about feasting. But Jesus said, well, I find faith on the earth. Look at churches in America today. I wonder how pleased Jesus is with the faith output. And I told you all two weeks ago, I'll choose to live in faith and not walk by fear. I say, God's done a good job taking care of me. Why would I doubt him now? Amen. Why would I turn my back on him now? Mm -mm. Lord, have mercy. wonder what would happen if we truly practiced this verse that you've heard preached every revival meeting you've ever been in. I read it yesterday on the phone. Second Chronicles seven fourteen. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. I wonder what would happen if we truly put our trust in God and in his word and put his word into practice. Where we not only become hearers of it, but we'd become heeders of it. We would heed to it. By the way, I didn't have time to preach much on that little two-minute message I gave yesterday on the phone. But Solomon had just finished the temple, and God told Solomon he would be his ear would be attent to the prayer in that place. Where? The house of God. You know where a revival come through? The house of God. You know where God is glorified? In the house of God. Say, preacher, things look awful bleak. Hallelujah. Because I've learned when things get the darkest, God shines the brightest. We've got to turn to God, talk to God, trust in God. And I promise you, it won't be bleak in your soul anymore. See, I cannot control the circumstances outside my life. All I can do is I can control how much of my life I'm going to give to God. The more I give to Him, the greater He is. Now, folks can choose to do whatever they want to. There is a consequence for your choices. Yes, sir. Hmm? The preachers talk about this contemporary crowd. Want to become like the world. You'll never win the world becoming like the world. Right. You win the world becoming like Jesus. Amen. Some of you got lost loved ones. You're never going to win them when you cater to them and you pacify them and you enable them. You know what will win your lost loved ones? When you make a stand for God and you're faithful to the things of God. They'll see the difference. Yeah. Hmm? But if they see you cower at everything that comes your way, they will not put any faith in what you have. Right. Huh? People have family come in. Preacher, I can't come to church tonight. My family's in. Bring your family with you. Yeah. Well, they won't come. We'll come without them. What kind, what kind of message are you sending to them? Yeah. Hmm? Well, pre preacher, uh, my family, they, they don't like the, the music I like. Well, they can like it or lump it, you know. Sure. Preacher, they, they think this Bible's archaic. Who cares? Preacher, my family said I can't come out to church. Who do they serve? Come on. I can tell you who a lot of people serve. Their fear, their families, their friends. I like that old song, I'd rather have Jesus yeah. Sing it. than Amen. anything. This whole world affords to me. I'll just hang with Jesus. It looks bleak. Jesus looks awful bright, did How about it today? Are you willing to turn to him and talk with him and trust in him? Huh? There's not a person in here who doesn't know somebody's lost. What a great time to get God on you so they can see a difference. See a difference. See a difference. I want my life to be 
much louder than my words. I want them to see Jesus in me. Let's all stand, Brother Ray, get a song of invitation. By the picking out a song, let's pray. Father, we love you. I'm glad that, Lord, I know you. I'm glad you're greater than all. Now, God, it looks awful bleak, so we're dependent on you to show up and look awful bright. Lord, we need you. Lord, only you will calm the fears when you say, Peace be still to the winds and waves of adversity. Now, Father, I've done all I can to portray the message that you give to me. Now we ask that you would birth it in people's hearts. God, I pray for any that may be here today unsaved. Lord, you know the heart of every individual. God, I pray you'd convict them of sin and through, through cords of love would draw them to repentance. God, I pray for those that are saved, but Lord, they believe, but they say, Lord, help thou my unbelief. Lord, increase their faith. Lord, those that are saved, but maybe they're lamps have gotten a little dusty I pray you'd cleanse their lamps where they'd shine bright those that are wavering I pray they'd get off the fence and stand upon a rock God I pray your perfect will be accomplished in this invitation now speak to hearts help us I pray Lord the psalmist said I'll look to the hills from which cometh my help Lord my help is in thee so help us this day Bless these in the altar. Again, speaking this invitation. Help folks do business with God. Well, thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. If you enjoyed today's message, head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on sermons. And don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast. As always, thanks for listening.